There are a lot of luxury two row SUVs. You might call them crossovers. And this is the 2021 Lincoln Corsair. It has some cool packages on it and it's gotten some amazing value. And we're gonna show you some information the dealer's not gonna tell you. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Lauren Fix. Today we're gonna to be looking at the 2021 Lincoln Corsair. This is the replacement for the MKC. Now, some of the things you need to know is there are some upgrades for 2021, very similar to 2020, and there's a monochrome package, which this vehicle has, and some cool upgrades, which is good to know, so you can make a decision between last year's and this year's model. Now, in 2020, that's when they got rid of the MKC, so if there's any still on the lot, there's probably some good deals. We're gonna give you some information the dealer's not gonna give you. They're gonna try and sell you on their vehicle because that's their job. We're gonna give you information so you can decide between the Corsair and some of their competitors, which are listed down below, and all the reviews for that are also listed down below. We'll go through 10 different categories in the and we will give you a car coach reports total and we'll give you some pros and cons and some tips that will help you save money. Now, if this is your first time to the channel, we do a lot more than just first looks of cars, cool car reviews. We also give you car smarts because knowledge is power and we give you some great ways to save money. So don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell. The 2021 Lincoln Corsair, and this is the monochrome, this is the black label, this is the fully loaded edition because that's what we get has three different engine options. Today, we're gonna to be test driving the two liter turbocharged engine. This is all wheel drive. It also comes front wheel drive. And we'll talk about those different options as we go through each category. Let's start with looking under the hood. Under the hood is a two liter turbocharged engine with 250 horsepower, 280 pound feet of torque, fuel economy, 24 miles to the gallon combined. This comes in front wheel drive or all wheel drive. And we'll go in deeper, both the performance and the handling segment. Putting it into Excite mode, 0 to 60, 6.7 seconds with this 2 liter engine. Here we go. This has really got good pickup. You know, I, I have to say, this is important when you're looking at a 2 liter turbo. There are other options available. There's a hybrid. There's uh, also, of course, a 2.5 liter engine. All the engines in this vehicle have really good gearing in the back. And so this is what you need in order to get going. When you buy horsepower, people think that's the number, but really it's torque that gives you that get up and go. And that's what's really important when you're looking at the performance of a vehicle and you're comparing it to the other cars in this class. Now, one of the things you have to know is it has really good acceleration, both in the corners, we pull out onto this main drag, just, it's really got good pull. And that's in the excite mode. Now let's move it down to something else because right now we've got all season tires on this, going from the excite mode to the conserve mode. Let's just see how the pickup is. Now, as soon as you get the light, you have that auto off that, and there's no way to shut it off. I've looked, unless there's something I'm missing, there's no buttons, it's not obvious. On the aviator and the navigator, there is. But in this vehicle, when you go to the excite mode, you, have, you don't have the auto off. This is the conserve mode. This is about saving that extra tablespoon of gas. And now that we're stopping at a light and we move to the normal mode, it does the same thing. So. Going back to that conserve mode, the light turns green and we're just gonna put our foot in it. Still has really good pickup. It doesn't have that turbo lag, which is very common in these vehicles. And so they've done a nice job staging it so the turbo comes on at lower speeds and gives you that push. And I think that's important because no one wants to have that horrible lag when you have to pass someone or make an emergency maneuver or getting on an on-ramp or passing a vehicle. And those are the kind of things that are frustrating on some of these cars. So when you're looking at performance, Put our foot in it here. We'll move it to normal mode. Pretty good. I'm going to give it an eight. When it comes to handling, this vehicle comes front wheel drive or all wheel drive. Now, if you're in the upper half of the country, obviously all wheel drive is a better choice. They haven't made any changes to the suspension in this car. There's a lot of other changes to this vehicle, but it is the same as the 2020. So you're not getting an increase in performance or handling. What you're getting is your increase in goodies technology and features and design, such as the packages we'll talk about in features. But when you're looking at the handling for this vehicle, just like the 2020, which we have done, and you can check that out up here, you'll find that a lot of the same things. They've had a lot of great success with the course here. It replaces the MKC, which actually my mother-in-law has one and she loves it. But this is a, that next step farther. This now looks like the rest of the family, the Navigator and the Aviator and the Nautilus. And I love those cars and we've done those reviews and you can check them out on our channel. 
but as far as handling, it's a very confident vehicle. It has good grip to the road. The brakes are great. Here, we'll hit the brakes. Pretty good for the brakes. It's nothing that makes you think the brakes are substandard to the other vehicles. It, it's very comparable in the class. The list of the competitors is down below and a link to all of the reviews that we've done. We've reviewed all of the competitors and there is a long list. This is a very popular category. Accelerate again. Good feel for the road. There's no torque steer uh, that you get in the steering wheel and the brakes are good and the handling is also really nice. It's, it's pretty tight. It's very confident. I certainly wouldn't feel on comfortable with this in snow or ice and there is different modes for that so when you go to the drive mode it starts with excite goes to conserve and then when you turn that button again you turn that dial it goes from conserve to normal and the nice there's really nice tech goes with a little show you get slippery and then from slippery you go into deep conditions which would be deep snow mud or sand that shuts off the traction control so you get really good traction and then after deep conditions, that's it. So you've got those five drive modes. So it goes excite, conserve, you can feel the difference in the torque right away. It does change the shift points, the normal, the slippery, and deep conditions, and that's it. So you've got those five modes. I like it in excite, but honestly, it's perfectly fine in normal. There's nothing that's substandard in any way, shape, or form. But as far as the grip for the road, the handling, the feel that you get, the ride, the ride is good. We I'm in Buffalo and the roads are terrible in New York State in general. They've just never been filled. And driving over the rough roads in this beautiful sunny day, which is why I got my glasses on, one of the things I should tell you also is you can see the head-up display with polarized glasses. And I think that is a major plus because not every brand has that. So it's something you should check out. You know, you want to see it, you paid for it. You want to have it give you that information. So it's really important. But as far as this vehicle and its handling and its confidence for you as the driver, I think you'd be very happy with this. And for handling, I gave it an eight. The Copilot 360 safety system includes a lot of standard features. The pre-collision assist with automatic emergency braking, pedestrian cross traffic alert, blind spot information, lane keeping assist, rear backup camera, auto high beams, plus adaptive cruise control, traffic jam assist, and stop and go for that cruise control so you don't have to keep going on and off the gas pedal. The reverse brake assist and speed sign recognition is there. A lot of this is completely adjustable on that screen in front of you. One of the nice things, like I was saying, is if you press that eye, it'll explain what it does. If you don't know, it'll show you. When you look at all the safety features that are standard in this co-pilot package, this vehicle earns a nine for safety. When it comes to visibility, it's actually a part of safety because 80% of your driving decisions are based on visibility. So it's not just looking out the front, but it's also looking out the back, the backup camera, the clarity of the backup camera, and then out the side, are the sills too high? So when you're looking at out the front, fine, the sills are a little bit high, so it sort of limits that second row. And when you're looking out the back, just using the rear view mirror, there are some limitations. The headrests are in the way. If no one's back there, sure, you can put those down. But the sides do have a little bit of blocking. So there's an around view camera and the backup camera and the clarity for that is really good. And when it comes to visibility, this vehicle earns an eight. Seating in the course air is for five people. Two child safety seats will fit in the back with a latch system. Up front, this is where the luxury is. 24 way massaging seats, just fabulous. One of the best seats on the market. The leather here, by the way, is really spectacular. And we'll talk about that in features. I love this blue, but the seating itself is great. Tons of adjustability. The steering wheel goes up and down. You want that 12 inch distance between the center of the steering wheel and your chest. The controls for the seats are on the door, which is a little different. And then there's also three memory seatings, different drivers. And behind that is a button that turns on the massaging seats, which I just love in this car. There's a lot of pluses to this seating, lots of adjustments, equal both driver and passenger side. I do appreciate that. Let's take a look at the second row. Getting into the second row, there is a lot of luxury here, starting with the seats, nice and comfortable, storage pouches in front, and behind the center console are two stage dual heated seats. Of course, you've got your vents, and then below that you have two additional plugins for outlets. In the doors you have storage, and then of course you've got your Revel tweeter and the speaker down below. One of the things I like are the cup holders are actually built in rather than being plastic out the front, which some of the competitors have, and I really don't like that because over the long haul they could get damaged. 
Now these 40, 60 split seats are great. Not just the fact that they can move back and forth six inches, but they also recline. That's nice because when you have child safety seats, which fit two back here, you can adjust it so the kids aren't kicking the back of your seat, which can get very frustrating. There's a lot of head, shoulder, and leg room here, but you want to make sure that anyone that's tall sits in the back seat and you have to have enough room for those child safety seats to make everybody happy. When you're looking at seating for this course here, it earns a 10. When you press the audio button, the 14 speaker Revel audio system is really fabulous and well balanced as well. You've got your different sources here. You can choose, of course, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, if that's what you prefer to use for your sound system, your phone connections, and this is your navigation. Again, it's a little bit dated, but most of us are using our phones. It is simple to use and it also has Waze built into it, which I really like. When you purchase the vehicle, you'll download the Lincoln app pressing apps and you'll get to connecting your device, finding your mobile apps and your Sirius XM link. This is pretty normal for most vehicles, but what else you get is your phone is your key and that is part of the Lincoln app. You can start the vehicle, open the doors, hit the lights and find out additional information. Everything's pretty simple to use. That's that Lincoln Way app. And when you connect that up, there's a lot of additional information you can use. Again, there's your Apple CarPlay or display. You can set this up any way you want. Standard Wi-Fi, which is really great and that's become pretty normal in these vehicles. When you press the seat button, like I discussed in seating, there is a ton of adjustments, 24 different adjustments, and then you get and pick the intensity that you want of all different areas from bolsters and thigh support. And when you hit that massage button, like I said, what's really nice about this is you have your low rolling, you, you press the button, it shows you what it does. The upper rolling, the circular cushion, full recovery if that's what you need and the relaxing because this vehicle is all about calm. The passenger has that same option as well. When you hit the ambient light button, you get to pick the color that you prefer. What calm color would you like? Do you want to match the color of the car or do you prefer something a little bit different? Really neat, nice choices and it's kind of fun to play with as well. One of the things that Ford and Lincoln have added to their center screens, if you don't know what it does, there's a little eye here. You touch the carrot and it'll explain to you what this feature does. And I think that's great. And it's all the way down, including the My Key, which has a setting for new drivers, the onboard modem serial, and whatever you might need is right here. These are great features to help you understand your vehicle and get the most of the technology that you paid for. One of the additional technologies is the Active Park Assist Plus, which removes the stress from parallel parking, perpendicular parking. It does the steering, the shifting, the braking, all the acceleration to get you in and out of those very tight spots. And it really works well. And Ford was one of the first people to bring this to market. When it comes to technology, this vehicle earns an eight. One of the nicest features is Ford has put the speak to talk right there on the steering wheel and say a command like call Steven FM 88.7 or the Sirius channel name to navigate to an address or point of interest, say find an address or find a place for a list of commands, say commands. Going to the right side of the steering wheel, this is your pages. This changes the information that's directly in front of you as you press the buttons. And the first button that comes, that first little bullet point goes to the calm screen, which doesn't give you any information. I prefer to have that on again. That's personal, allows you those choices. This little joystick right here changes the information. This would go for navigation, which will put the navigation information in front of you. You can go back as well. This allows you to go to music which will be information right in front of you, and then your phone, and then your settings by just pushing that little joystick down. That includes the controls for the head-up display, which is very large and has a lot of great information that you might need. On the left stock, you've got your regular turn signals, headlights, and one of the safety features right there for the lane departure warning. There is also a paddle shifter here. I don't know who's gonna use it, but it's there. On the right stock, you've got your wipers, and the end of that stock is your rear wiper, and this is the plus of the paddle shifter. At least it's there and you have it if you really need it. There are 10 exterior and five interior colors. All these materials are nice and soft. I really love this white birch. It's really pretty. Real stitching also, which is nice. All the materials are really top quality. Vents and your lighting system here, as well as opening up the trunk. Moving over to the door, you've got your audio system, your three memory positions, your massaging seats, which is great. 
all your seat controls are here and then this nice chrome mixed in with this black all your normal controls are here on the door and storage in the door. Your engine start stop is right here, really easy to see, and of course, very stylized. I like all the chrome trim, they did a good job. We did talk about this screen in the technology, but I wanted to show you one thing in this audio system. This is the Revel audio system, and you go to the bottom and you actually get a little experience. Each of those little blips that you heard in that audio stream was showing you each of the speakers and where they're located. The quality is fantastic. Also, there's Quantum Logic Surround, which is off right now. You can do the audience or on stage, and you can make all your adjustments here. Same as you would have in many cars, there's going to be a lot of additional questions about each of these buttons and what they do. You can put that in the questions down below and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Now, I love this blue color. It's very different from a lot of the competitors. Moving your way down here, you press this button. This is your navigate to park. This is your self parking, part of what I discussed in technology, parallel perpendicular park. It'll do it all for you. Really nice. It'll actually help you find a spot as well. This button, when you press it, will go to your auto start stop, which I want that off. Again, you have to go through that button to get to it. Your trash control and additional settings are right here. And we covered all that in safety. In addition, there are three buttons here in the middle between the two vents. The first one you hit is your park assist, helping you find a parking spot and getting in and out perpendicular parallel. Also your parking aids, which you probably wanna shut off when you go through a car wash. The second button has your auto start stop, your auto hold traction control settings and additional settings which we discussed in safety. Hitting that third button gives you your round view camera and it also has additional settings so you can see where you are so you don't hit anything and that's really important especially along the sides of the vehicle. Most of the time the around view will be best so you can see what's going on in all directions. Instead of having a shifter there are buttons park reverse neutral and drive then going further down this piano black I'm not a big fan of this it gets a lot of fingerprints and a lot of the other brands are starting to get away from it because of just that. You've got your standard audio controls here in case you don't want to change that center screen and then you've got your controls for your air cooled three staged, your heated three staged and then of course your heated steering wheel and your regular controls for your climate. Very easy to use. Adjust your temperatures here. Looking at the center console, slide this little cover back and you've got more outlets because there just isn't enough in this whole vehicle, including a 12 volt USB, USB-C, two cup holders. This is your drive mode, which I think is really cool. We showed that to you in handling. You just turn that button and everything has a little presentation in front just to make it fun. This is your parking brake and then you go into your center console. Opening up the center console, it's pretty deep. There's storage and this is your wireless charger right here. You can just put your phone right in that little spot and it will charge. I love this gigantic panoramic roof. It's really impressive. It opens and it's two stage. And when it comes to features for this vehicle, there is quite a bit, especially the black label program. All in total, it earns an eight. Our course Air has the monochromatic package, which is an additional $1,600. However, this is a really pretty special paint, and it's an additional $695 on top of the price of the vehicle. You need to start adding these things up because you'll see that as you add up each package, it can get expensive. But I really like the fact that the grill matches the color of the vehicle. It makes it really classy and very modern in design. It has a nice flow. The Lincoln logo here is not in your face like we see in some of the other brands that are competitors with these huge logos. Very nicely done and a nice chrome surround. The headlights are LED and when you work your way down to this lower grill, it's shiny. Typically they put a flat color here so if it gets dirty you don't see it. And you can see there's a little bit of dirt on here from just test driving this vehicle. So it does a nice job of masking it because it's white. If it were a black car, it would probably be pretty obvious and that's up to you to choose the colors. There's quite a few of them and remember the black label has a special selection of colors on top of that as well as interior colors and different personalities. When you hit the unlock button and you're looking for it in a parking lot, these 
marker lights turn yellow just to kind of let you know, hey, I'm here. But it's also inviting because the side mirrors unfold and it makes it ready for you. Nicely done. You see that a lot in this luxury crossover segment, just these little niceties that make it nice in design. Part of this monochromatic package is these black wheels. Although it would be kind of cool if these wheels were available in body color. That would make it really modern looking. But these are 20 inch rims. They ride on all season Continental tires. There are some neat details as you move your way back. One of the really cool details is this Corsair logo on the side. It's clean. It's very much a throwback to the Lincoln design of the past very modern but yet very classic i like the white with the chrome very classic and then you move your way down we'll hit that unlock again you can see that there are marker lights here that are on the side mirrors they also let you know this is your car moving your way back you can see these roof rails they're very low profile but on top is a beautiful full panoramic roof and we covered that when we were on the inside of the vehicle i really think they did a nice job making it very fluid the lines across here are really nice and clean and then there's a highlight color here that's not chrome it's a flat silver and it does a nice job breaking up some of the white here because there's quite a bit of it when you come around to the back this upper wing is really nice and the third brake light is integrated one of the things i don't like is this wiper arm it should be tucked up underneath you see that in the cadillac and some of the other competitors and the reason i don't like it is one it's hard to get underneath it if you want to clean the glass but it also gets damaged when you're using an ice scraper if you live in the upper half of the country. The Lincoln logo across the back is clean and modern. And I really like when you hit the unlock button, you can see this full line of lighting. It's all LED and the lower marker lights. Really nicely done, very clean and real dual exhaust with this lower valance. Very clean, very nice. And when you're looking at the design for this Corsair, it earns a nine. When you're looking at the quality of the Corsair, it's Lincoln. It's going to be Ford's premium line. On top of that, you're looking at top quality paint, top build quality materials built here in the U.S. I like the interior materials. The leathers are top quality. The materials that you see, if it's real wood, it's real wood. And they've done a nice job picking a nice balance of colors as well. There's a four-year, 50,000-mile warranty. And the quality of these vehicles, especially as they've been on the market for a while, have been really great. And so for quality, we gave it a nine. Open the hatch and you have 27.6 cubic feet of storage. Fold down that second row and you're at 57.6 cubic feet of storage, which is a little bit more than some of the competitors. Also, one thing I should note is there is a spare tire, but it was extra and I think it should be standard because a lot of people don't like these tire inflation products. That is right under here, easily stored. There is also hooks in back, more storage and a way to fold down that second row. One of the things I really like about the Corsair is the great value. Starting price, around $36,000. Then you add in the technology package, it's $4,000. And the $1,600 monochromatic package, plus the special paint and all these little extras, suddenly brings the price up to about $50,000. Now there are some deals and some trade-ins and some incentives, but right now we're looking at just retail prices. So comparing this vehicle to the list that's down below in the description, of all the other competitors, this car does a really good job with value, and for value, it earns a nine. When you total up all 10 categories for this 2021 Lincoln Corsair, it does really well compared to some of the competitors. The pros, the technology is great. I wish the screen was a lot larger. The seats, spectacular, but they're extra. 24-way massaging seats, how could you go wrong? Plenty of comfort and the design is really impressive. I do love this black label package. This gives you all that concierge when you need service, they come and pick it up, they give you a vehicle and they bring it back. That's the way Lincoln wants to do things because they want to show how premium their product has become a big change from the past. Although there are some pros and cons that we discussed along the way, you add up all 10 categories, this vehicle earns an 86. Now, one of the things you need to know before you make a decision on this car is to check with your insurance agent because the insurance rates are going to be completely different. Some vehicles are more expensive than others. And we discuss that on our website, carcoachreports.com. It's in English and in Spanish, and there's some additional contributors and other reviews on this vehicle as well. If you got value from this video, make sure to give it a like and a share. And if we didn't answer your questions, because we could go on for hours, Put that in the comments down below. I will answer your questions because I want you to go into the dealership and be prepared to make a decision. And this will help you. If you like cars, you'll love our podcast, Total Car Score. It's on all platforms. We give you some information that no one's heard because we bring executives on and internal people. We get some information out of them that no one else has heard. 
Also, follow me on all forms of social media at Lauren Fix. We put up some cool information there as well. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.